really what tonight's about is just having a conversation. We've got a presentation for you. Um, and kind of really what the impetus for all of this were um, issues along Jackrabbit and Indian School. Everybody's nodding their heads as I was going around. Are you going to talk about Jackrabbit? Are you going to talk about Indian School? Are you going to talk about Van Buren? Yes. Jackrabbit Trail and I-10. So I said what really prompted this, a few months back there was a, an accident at um, Jackrabbit and Van Buren. Um, luckily no one was seriously injured, but it was a, a, a pretty devastating accident there. Um, those of you that live in that area know it's a two-way stop. Um, the, the Jackrabbit doesn't stop going north and south, but Van Buren does. So it, my Facebook page kind of blew up. So people having a lot of concerns about the traffic, uh, concerns about the potential of serious injury, um, I was able to, to get with staff and get some answers to those questions and then talking with uh, the folks that I work with at the city, it's like, you know, we really need to get the community involved in this. So we did pull some accident data um, for Jackrabbit Trail and I-10 and this includes the Van Buren intersection. Um, over five years, luckily, there was only eight accidents. So thankfully, none of them were fatal, four injuries and four hit and runs. So these are reported. So one accident is too many, but you can see that you know, over, over this five year period, um, averaging a little over one accident a year. So I'm not gonna say it's safe, but I'm gonna say that it, it's probably as close to accident free as we could hope for. So the challenges, oh, and I know any conversation that you've had with me or others with the city, you, you've heard this, so I apologize if I sound like a broken record, um, but a lot of that intersection, especially Jackrabbit and I-10, lies outside of the city of Buckeye. So it's not in our jurisdiction, but it has a, a major impact on the residents of Buckeye and the residents of District 6. So <clears throat> that intersection is actually under the jurisdiction of three entities. So McDot, Maricopa County Department of Transportation, Arizona Department of Transportation, and Maricopa County Flood Control District. So if you've been through there, you know on the west side, right under, on the west side of Jackrabbit, there's a flood control canal. And I know the people from Oregon are saying, wait, we live in a desert, why do you need a flood control canal, right? <laughs> this area does flood. It hasn't in a while, but it does, and that's why that canal is located where it is. So the issue with this gets down to funding. We can't just block off the canal because we do need it. Uh, it has to be there, so we have to move it, and that's a very expensive proposition. We're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of um, $30 million, plus or minus, to move that canal. So, once, and there are plans in the works to, to remediate this whole area, but funding is, being, is one of them. The second, if you notice that bridge, it's very narrow going east and west, so it has to be widened. Um, we've got to look at what we're doing with interchanges. Um, overall, not a cheap proposition, not something that we can flip a switch and make it, done, make it happen tomorrow. But I want to assure you that it is at the top of our list. We are working with those agencies to make things happen there. We're working with our legislative representatives, um, Senator Kerr, uh, Representative Osborne, uh, Dunn, and John, who represent this area um, in the next legislative session uh, to get some funding. So where the legislature uh, would actually appropriate some money for us to do some work out here. Okay, so where, um, 
what this would do is get us a jump start in designing what that interchange would look like. So, and it's not, even though it seems like that interchange was designed on the back of a napkin, and I'm not saying that it wasn't, um, but there's a lot of design work that needs to go into that because we've got to make improvements to the bridge, uh, have to make improvements um, to both Jack, Jackrabbit north and south of that interchange, uh, as well as the interchange itself. So, um, and this is where the legislators come, the legislators come in. Um, so we can get a jump start of about six months on that project, provided we get funding from the legislature. And they're working very hard to make that happen for us. So in the meantime, you know, there's always an interim solution. So I'm happy to say we have an interim solution for Jackrabbit and I-10. Um, several of us, myself, um, George Diaz, who's our, uh, the city's intergov, met with uh, city engineers and met with representatives from ADOT and MCDOT and actually stood at that intersection for a couple of hours and watched the traffic. And I would say one car in five yelled out the window that we needed to do something. <laughs> gotcha, we're covered. So it was really good. It, it, it was good for the ADOT and the MCDOT representatives to hear and see that, not that, that they weren't aware, but <clears throat> literally our engineers working with um, the transportation representatives sat there and talked about what an interim solution could be. So if you know, there's no really traffic mediation there, right? It's, it's kind of like playing the game Frogger. Like you gotta wait for an opening and jump out, which is again, not the best way to do that. So the engineers, all of them said, well, we can put an always stop condition in. So putting stop signs where there are not stop signs now. So it actually provides a little break in traffic so you don't have to play Frogger so you can safely you know, get on to Jackrabbit Road um, or get off Jackrabbit and get onto the freeway. So we just found out um, yesterday that they're working on an order and will begin the installation of stop signs at Jackrabbit and I-10. Small victory, I know, but it, it, it is a victory and, and um, it's one I'll take right now, knowing that there's a longer term solution in the mix. So I'll take it. So I wanna thank our, our city folks um, for helping make that happen. So Jackrabbit Trail, Blue, Blue Horizons and Van Buren. Talk to you, we're kind of really the impetus for why we're here tonight. So <clears throat> actually, um, again, this is a multi-jurisdictional thing. Um, Buckeye owns uh, three legs of that. The county owns one leg of that intersection. Um, but working with the county uh, and this, our city folks, they'll actually, they're starting tomorrow to put a four-way stop at Van Buren and Jackrabbit. So I actually went by that intersection today uh, McDot was out there doing some prep work. Um, so there'll be some lane restrictions while the, that work gets completed. They do some restriping and, and put up their notification signs, but we will have a four-way stop at um, Van Buren and Jackrabbit. Again, another small victory, but um, that intersection is also warranted for a traffic light. So one more, meaning it, there's enough justification to put a traffic light in there, but it gets into a funding issue. So again, I'm not blaming everything on money, but um, there's a process when, when we make expenditures like that and we've got to work through that process. But we will have a four-way stop there. So hopefully that'll help ease a, little, a few concerns. Indian school, anybody interested in Indian school? Indian school is gonna be widened. DMB is responsible for widening Indian School. So <clears throat> the project has been designed and is currently out to bid and those bids are due uh, next month. And hopefully starts in January, um, completion over the summer and prior to the school year. 
Um, there'll be at least two through lanes, eastbound and westbound, um, as well as a raised median and dedicated left turn lanes. So Acacia, um, Acacia is an issue, and I know at least one person mentioned Acacia tonight. Um, Acacia to the high school traffic light. I'm gonna be putting a new walkway in on the south side of Indian School Road. I went by there today. Um, it's not gonna be concrete, it's gonna be decomposed granite, and they've already staged the granite. So, um, nice red colored dirt that's gonna be a walkway. Um, that's under construction. High school students will be able to cross at the high school traffic light. The stop signs eastbound and westbound on Indian School at Acacia are going to be removed. It's okay to applaud I mean, if you want. I'm just so again, our traffic engineers um, were working on this. There'll still be the opportunity to make a left-hand turn uh, westbound off of Indian School onto Acacia, but there'll be no stop sign. So traffic will actually be able to go around. Um, so won't be any kind of impedance. Um, permanent traffic light will be built at the intersection of Indian School and Pioneer Street. Right now, it's, it's a temporary hanging by the wires. So um, we'll be installing a permanent light at that intersection as well. So McDowell um, is a reliever in from Verado Way to Jackrabbit Trail. And part of this is under jurisdiction of, um, of MCDOT again, counties consulting with us to study Jackrabbit and McDowell. Um, it borders, we got private property and state trust land on either side, um, primarily DMV and city um, uh, infrastructure projects. DMV is currently working on design for construction of, Mc, of McDowell from Verado Way east of Tuthill Wash. Um, construction is development driven, DMB, uh, hopefully the construction starts within two or three years. City SIP projects, um, project for uh, McDowell Road, uh, Tuthill Wash to 201st Avenue, uh, planned for 22-23 uh, through 23-24. Project will extend McDowell Road so it is continuous, one lane each direction from Waterway to Jackrabbit Trail. A second city project planned 22-23 through 24-25 to improve McDowell Road uh, to two lanes in each direction with the median. So again, yeah, this because it's DMV, it's development driven. As that those developments get built out, then we'll see McDowell Road start to go through. And that'll again take some pressure off those other arterials. So you can see McDowell at the top, again, going all the way through to Jackrabbit. That's in essence what it, it will look like eventually. Okay, so Thomas Road, I think John touched on it a little bit. Um, it's coming along and, and that will be from right away to Jackrabbit. So a bridge over Tuthill Wash. Uh, construction is expected to start next spring. You know, one of the things that I said I'd do when I took this seat was get answers to your questions. You may not necessarily like the answers that you get, but you'll get an answer. So um, my contact information, really easy to get a hold of. 